Okay, hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, after we finished the transition signals for reason, for reasons, we will move to the examples. And these are really important because we give more examples than we give reasons. We only like give three reasons, but for each reason, we give like three examples at least. So in, in concluding, we will have like nine examples. Anyhow, after you have finished reasoning, start proving your reasons by giving examples, specific examples. These examples must hold actual names or anything specific, okay? Don't be general, don't be vague, be specific. In order to do that, there, there are three transition signals, which are really famous. The first one, we all know it, for example, the second one, I think we all know it, for instance, and the third one, such as. But be careful, be careful for the punctuation. The punctuation is really important, okay? It can make you lose marks. So be careful for the punctuation. If your example is a complete sentence, okay? Focus on this. If your example is a complete sentence, that contains a subject, a verb, and if the verb was an action verb, it will have also an object. So it, if it is a complete sentence, use for instance and for example. So here are two examples. For example, you can see a lot of historical areas in Al Omari Mosque. The second, for instance, people can have a lot of fun in Gaza Beach. So if I remove the transition signal, you can see a lot of historical areas in Al Omri Mosque. Here I have a complete sentence because you, okay, is a subject, can see this is the verb, a lot of historical areas. This is all the complement of the sentence. So use these two transition signals when you have a complete sentence. And also, this type appears as the start of a new sentence. As you can see, the first letter is capitalized. That means that it starts after the ending of a previous sentence. This is the start of a new sentence. So you put them as the start of a new sentence. If your complement is a noun or a group of nouns, if it is not a complete sentence, use these three transition signals. For example, comma, for instance, comma, and such as, but you put before such as, comma. Okay, here is a wrong punctuation. And for example, for instance, you put comma before and after that. Right now, we'll be seeing. Be careful for the, for the punctuation also. Focus. If you want to use, for example, and for instance, put commas before and after that. Okay, Gaza has a lot of historical places. Koma, for example, Koma, Al Omari Mosque, and Al Basha Castle. But notice here that we only have put names. We don't put complete sentences. We only said names Al Omari Mosque and Al Basha Castle. We only put names. We didn't put any complete sentences. And also, you can see that these two transition signals, as well as such as, will appear in the middle of a sentence, not at the beginning. The second example, Gaza contains good places for having fun in them, comma. For instance, another comma. So the transition signal is surrounded by two commas. For instance, Gaza Beach and Al Baladiya National Park. So we are putting names, nouns, or a group of nouns. We don't put a complete sentence. This is the main difference between the first ones and the second. Right now, we will discuss such as, and it is really important. In using such as, put a comma before it, just before it, just one comma. <clears throat> Gaza has a lot of historical places, such as the Omri Mosque and Al Basha Castle. Gaza contains good places for having fun in them, such as Gaza Beach and Al Baladiya National Park. So obviously, to conclude, okay, right now it's telling you these three types come in the middle of a sentence, not at the beginning of it. 
This is really obvious. But to conclude, you have a three transition sig signals in general. For example, for instance, such as if your complement is a complete sentence, okay, you use for example and for instance, and you put a comma after them, and they appear, the whole sentence with the transition signal appear as at the beginning of a new sentence. But if your complement is only a noun or a group of nouns, you use, for example, for instance, and only and also such as. But the difference that they appear in the middle of a sentence, for example, and for instance, they are surrounded by commas. You put a comma before them and after them. But for such as, you only put a comma before it. This is the main difference. The main difference. Also, if I mean, the slides are really clear, you can read them and you will understand, understand everything with them alone without referring to the lectures. Part two. Okay, we still have 30 minutes. Right now, we'll be taking sentence structure. Okay, we'll be discussing complex sentences. We discussed them before in chapter three. Right now, we'll be making a quick revision for complex sentences. We discussed before the complex sentence and the dependent and the independent clauses. Quickly, right now, we'll be making a revision, a quick revision for what have we learned. An independent clause is a complete sentence by itself. We said that when we have an independent clause from the name, independent means that it can stand alone. It doesn't need anything else. So an independent clause is a complete sentence by itself. The second thing, a dependent clause is not a sentence by itself, and it needs an independent clause to complete it. We also said that from the name, a dependent clause means that it depends on something else. So it is not a sentence by itself, and also it needs something to complete, to complete it, which is, in this case, the independent clause. So obviously, when we join the dependent clause with the independent clause, together we are creating a new kind of sentences, which is the complex sentence. The complex sentence can be in any order. We also discussed this. Right now, we'll be exemplifying it. When the independent clause comes first, don't put a comma. But however, if the dependent clause comes first, you have to put a comma. Okay, quick revision. We said that the dependent clause is the same as the independent clause. But what differs is the subordinate conjunction. If we brought an independent clause and put a subordinate conjunction to it, we will create a dependent clause. Yani, if I said, I am going to university, this is an independent clause, so it is obviously a complete sentence. But if I add, if I added a subordinate conjunction, such as when, which, or while, etc., these things, I'll create a dependent clause. So if I said, I'm going to the university and added a subordinate conjunction, I will say when I when I go to the university. Okay. Let's leave the present continuous and focus on the present. I go to university. If I said when I go to university, right now I created a dependent clause. So here I need an independent clause to, to follow it. So I'll bring another simple sentence, such as when it uh, when I go to university. It will be raining. It will be raining when I go to university. So here I have two clauses. Independent clause, which is it will be raining. This is an independent clause. It has a complete idea, a complete meaning. It doesn't need anything to help them. And we have also a dependent clause, which is when I go to university. It doesn't have a complete idea. Because if I told you when I go to the university, you won't understand anything. You'll say like, yeah, when you go to university, what will happen? We said this explicitly in chapter three. We explained fully what is the independent clause and the dependent and the complex sentence. But about the orders, if I put the independent clause at first, I will not put any cause. So if I said, 
if I said, it will be raining when I go to university, there, there will be no commas. But if I change that, if I ex exchange the places, the dependent clause with the independent, and I said, when I go to the university, it will be raining. Here, I need a comma after the dependent clause, which is when I go to the university. I put a comma, then I put the independent clause, which is it will be raining. OK, we have taken before time subordinators which I just mentioned, just such as when, uh, while, and before, after, and since. Okay, no sense, I think it's not with them. Anyhow, now we will discuss two new types, which are reason subordinators and condition subordinators. So focus here, we have an S, subordinators, that means it is more than one, but for the condition subordinator, it is just only one subordinator. Reason subordinators tell a reason for something to happen, such as because and since. What do I mean that they tell a reason? Right now, we'll be understanding them from the examples. Because I did not study well, I will fail my study. Okay. So I'm telling you, because of this reason that I didn't study well, okay, this something will happen. I will fail my study. So I have a reason. And I have something will happen because of this reason. The reason is that I didn't study, that something will happen that I will fail my study. The second example, I will fail my study since I did not study well. Okay, I forget to read something. No 12, there is no difference in use, in use between them. So because equals sense, there is no difference between them. So if you exchange them, nothing will differ. No punctuation, nothing at all. But focus that they both are subordinators. So whenever they come, okay, whenever they appear, you, are, you will create a dependent clause. And whenever you create a dependent clause, you will need an independent clause. Then you will have to focus on the comma. When the dependent clause comes, comes first, you need to put a comma. So because I didn't study well, I put a comma, I will fail my study. I will fail my study since I didn't study well. Here, the independent clause came first. I will fail my study since I didn't study well. This is all about the reason subordinators. I have a reason and something will happen because of this reason, okay? Right now, I will, we will take the condition subordinator. The condition subordinator, it says to you, what is the condition in order for something to happen? So, هي الشرط يعني في شرط لازم يصير عشان حاجة تانية تصير مش سبب السبب بيحكي السبب بيحكي إنه هذا الإشي صار فهذاك الإشي صار تبع اللي لكن الشرط بحكي لك إنه في أنا عندي شرط لو هذا الشرط صار هذاك الإشي حيصير لكن the reason the reason it happened but the condition it didn't happen okay so for example if I do not study well I will fail my exams so the reason the, the condition here didn't happen it didn't happen yet I'm telling you if I didn't study well I will fail my exams but in the reason the reason have have happened because I didn't study well I didn't study well, absolutely I didn't. Because of this, I will fail my study. So the reason happened. But in the condition, this is the condition. If I did it in the future, I will fail my exam. Something will happen. I will fail my exams if I don't study well. And also F is a subordinator, so focus that you are creating a dependent clause and independent clause. So you need to focus on the commas. If he speeds too much, he will get a ticket, okay? So here is the dependent clause came first, and after that, we have the independent. We put a comma between them. If he speeds too much, so here we have a condition that speeding too much, if he, in the future, speeded too much, he will get a ticket. This is about the condition. I think it is really clear. 
Okay, now you have to know that sense can be either a subordinate, okay, or a preposition. We said before in chapter, in chapter four also, we discussed propositions. And we said, after a proposition, it must come a noun or a noun phrase. After propositions, always nouns appear, okay, or noun phrases. Anyhow, when it comes as a subordinator, it tells a reason, okay? And we said this, that when it comes as a subordinator, it tells a reason. Since I don't own a car, I take a bus every day. So here is the reason, my reason, I don't, I don't own a car. Because of this, okay, because of this, I take a bus every day. So I have a reason, and because of this reason, something else happened. I can't pay the fees since I don't have money. Because of not having money, I won't pay the fees. So I'm having a reason which is not owning money. And because of this reason, something else will happen. Additionally, okay. Additionally, if it tells a duration to time, it is a proposition. So if it tells a, a duration of time, okay, <clears throat> it is a preposition. Since I started my study, I brought high marks. Here, we don't have a reason. We have a duration of time. At that time that I started to study, at that time, okay, at the time I started to study, I brought high marks. He became more fit since he started to practice in the gap. At that time, when he started to practice in the game, he became more fit. So you must focus. When it is, when it is come, when it when it comes as a reason, it is a subordinate. But if it came as only a duration of time, okay, so obviously it is a preposition. It might be a little bit perplexing but or confusing but with time you will take take on it moreover okay right now we have another another subordinator that can be that can all also come i think as a, uh i don't know what his name because is different from because of because of okay it is all also a preposition because of is a two word preposition. In chapter four, we discussed that prepositions can either be one word or two words or three words. Here it tells you because of is a two word preposition. Gaza is famous because of its historical areas. Okay. Because is a subordinate, a pronoun follows. Gaza is famous because it has some historical areas okay a pronoun follows there is a wrong in slides a pronoun follows must be uh, and the because of so how to different to differentiate between because of and because alone when because comes alone it is a subordinate and after the subordinate we said that there is a de an dependent clause and the dependent clause it is absolutely a sentence, okay, without the subordinate. So it will contain a subject verb combination. So after because the subordinate, you will find a subject verb combination. Because it has some historical areas, it has it, it is the subject, and has it's the verb. But in because of, you see that there is only a pronoun, which is it's. It is a possessive, a possessive pronoun. This is how to differentiate between the two types, because and because of. Because after it follows a subject and a verb combination. But because of, you must put a pronoun after it. Because of his, because of her, because of its historical areas, but not a subject verb combination. Because you're not you all you are not creating a complete sentence. If you said it's historical areas, here 
there is a phrase. It is not a sentence because you only have a pronoun which acts like a subject. Okay, you are not creating a full sentence. You need a verb. So here it's historical areas. This is a phrase. It is only a phrase. It's not a complete sentence. But because it has some historical areas, it has some historical areas. We have here a pronoun or a subject. Okay, it is a subject, has is a verb, and some historical areas. So here you have a complete sentence that contains a subject and a verb and the complement. Okay, at the end, we'll be taking capitalization rules and punctuation. Okay, we'll be taking commas after capitalization. Here are another two rules for capitalization. Some abbreviations. الابريفيشن هو الاختصار لما احنا نيجي نختصر كلمه كبيره بالاخص لمؤسسات او دول حاجه زي هيك او اسماء اشخاص زي دكتور مستر مسز بروف بروفيسور نختصرها لبروف مس او مسز when we abbreviate okay we capitalize the whole letters okay for instance, United States of America, we say USA. Saudi Arabia, we say SA. Our oh, SA. Japan. No, no, no. Some abbreviation. Uh, USA is an abbreviation for United States of America. Do not capitalize all of the letters in a country's name. Okay, we talked before in chapter one that we don't capitalize off as well as add, as well as all the prepositions, such as in and, and these things, we don't capitalize it. Okay, we don't capitalize them. Saudi Arabia, okay, capitalize only the first letter of the abbreviation of a person's title. All, also the person's title, such as doctor, Mr. and Mrs. and prof, professor, we capitalize them also. Saudi Arabia and Japan, we capitalize them because they are obviously countries, okay, and also nationalities. So we capitalize them. We took this in chapter, uh, I think, three or two. We took this. All the words in a greeting and the first word in the closing of a letter. So if you greet a person at the proposal of a letter or at the beginning of a letter, you capitalize the whole sentence. Dear sir, we capitalize the D in dear and the S in sir. To whom it may concern. This is a greeting. So we capitalize the first word, all of them. Okay, love and very truly yours. These are closing. So we only capitalize the first word. Love, it is the first word. So we capitalize the first letter. Very truly yours. We only capitalize very. We don't capitalize truly yours. This is really important in letters, academically. So memorize this. It can come as an example in the exam, like a letter, an academic letter. And it, it will tell you absolutely that find the mistakes here. And it can uh, bring you a, a closing that it is holistically capitalized, like very is capitalized, truly is capitalized, and yours is capitalized. So you have to say like, Truly and yours must not be capitalized. Expect this exam. Okay, there is, here is uh, a paragraph for you to practice at home after you have taken 12 rules, okay? After we have taken 12 rules, here is a paragraph that has, I think, all the 12 mistakes. So you need to capitalize. As you can see, dear Mickey, you have to capitalize the greetings, we have just said this. So you have to capitalize the D and you have to capitalize the M. And we also have, well, it is the beginning of a sentence, you have to capitalize it. And also we have I, we said in chapter one, you have to capitalize the pronoun I in everywhere. As you can see, you have to uh, read the paragraph and see what are the mistakes and fix them. If you want to send them in the Telegram group, send them and we will send the file of the correction. Okay, right now we'll be taking uh, four extra rules. They are they are they are not will they won't be eight because these four 
rules, these first four rules, we have been taking them, we have taken them, because of this, I said these are the old ones, use a comma after transition signals and prepositional phrases. Okay, we discussed this before, before coordinated conjunction and a compound sentence. In a complex sentence, when a dependent adverb close comes before an independent close, we have just said this, to separate items in a series. This is in adjectives or items in general. If they are in a series, you must put commas. Okay, the new ones, uh, to separate thousands, millions, billions, okay? The colleague has, we say, 23 comma and uh, 215 students. So we put commas to separate thousands, millions, and billions, to separate numbers. In the year 2002, okay, uh, but not in a number that expresses a year. Okay, it tells you, this is obvious. It tells you that you capitalize them in numbers only, but not in numbers of years. In addresses, and not to separate dollars from cents or whole numbers from decimals. And separating dollars, we put a period, okay? We put a point, we don't put commas. And in also in addresses, because they can be uh, four numbers, they act like a thousand. So we don't put commas to separate them. We only separate them if they are a number in a in academic paragraph. If we count something, such as uh, twenty-three thousand students, so we put a comma here. The whole, the other things we all, we either can put a period or we don't put anything to separate the parts of dates and after years in the middle of a sentence. Okay, focus here that we only put a comma, okay, after the day. We don't put between months, okay? The third millennium start, started on January. The first, we put a comma, 2002, 2001. To separate the parts of dates and after years, in the middle of sentences, okay? So we put after the day and after the year. We don't put after the month. To separate the parts of a US address, expect between the states and the zip code. Okay, the address of the White House. Okay, this is if the address is, is too long, we won't, I think we won't be expecting this, okay? Or facing this in exams. This is if the address is too long, that it tells you a city and a state and another state, you separate them with commas. After the greeting and closing in a personal letter. Okay, we have just taken the greetings and the closing, and we said that we have to capitalize, but right now it's telling you that you, sh you must put commas after the greetings and also after the closing. So it is really obvious. Okay, right now we have finished chapter five. Uh, I think tomorrow or maybe at night if I finished uh, the, okay, let's just stop the recording.